ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انما المؤمنون الذين امنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا باموالهم وانفسهم في سبيل الله اولئك هم الصادقون قل اتعلمون الله بدينكم والله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الارض والله بكل شيء عليم يمنون عليك ان اسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي اسلامكم بل الله يمن عليكم ان هداكم للايمان ان كنتم صادقين ان الله يعلم غيب السماوات والارض والله بصير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اني اسالك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا امين يا رب العالمين ماي ريسبكتد برادرز اند ماي سسترز today inshallah the subject i have chosen for khutba is to give you some perspective that why religion is becoming irrelevant to our life let's analyze that where we stand from the perspective of our deen why is it happening that every day our relationship our connection with our deen is getting weaker and weaker this question is very important because the future of our future generations depends on our behavior our attitude our approach our connection our perspective about deen so this is very important my brothers and my sisters not only living in the west but also even if we live in muslim majority country one of the reason that we are getting irrelevant is that our deen has become part of us through memorization that we have learned certain things and we just want to follow the literal way what we have memorized and deen has become just an external part of our belief and practice somehow there is a feeling of compulsion there is a feeling of jabr there is a feeling of force that i am not with my deen through my heart my brothers and my sisters when i am not able to do anything by convincing myself that my soul my blood my sweat and my heart everything is together with my concept with my belief then believe me i will not be able to perform according to my potential and abilities and capacity that's why we see all the weaknesses because one of the alim he said very rightly the ilm the knowledge you have if it does not give you marifa of allah subhanahu wa taala that is called jahiliya that is called darkness an ilm which does not get translated does not get transmitted in my mamlaat in my ikhlaq in my dealings then that ilm is nothing but zulm 
and wallahi i was looking for best translation for zulm in english there is no single word in english which can give 100% meaning of zulm so ilm without transmitting that ilm in my dealings in my mamlaat that is a zulm my brothers and my sisters here i want to also tell you one thing you know surah hujrat the ayas that i am going is very interesting dialogue that allah subhanahu wa taala has put for you and me and before i go to that dialogue that i just read remember one thing even 7 billion people on this planet if they say that we reject quran we reject what prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said this will not affect the truth even an inch truth is going to stay truth if there is a sun outside no matter 7 billion people they come together on one page and they deny that there is no sun but sun will still continue shining that's how our belief should be that even everybody will reject but still truth is going to stay the truth the only condition for you and me is the aya i read in which allah subhanahu wa taala says that no matter what you do in your life you may be weaker in this life you may have very few deeds that you can collect in this life but only condition that i want from you is thumma lam yartabu that don't have any doubt about quran don't have any doubt about allah subhanahu wa taala don't have any doubt about prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what is the meaning of doubt doubt is not that if i have a question in my heart if something pops in my mind that i am not sure that is not doubt doubt is something which stops you from following the path of quran the following the path of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is doubt and allah subhanahu wa taala here says after that aya qul atu allimun allah bi dinikum these munafiqin they are giving you news about their deen that they have iman to you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they want to show that yes we have iman they are bringing it as a news tell them wallahu ya'lamu ma fi as-samawati wa ma fi al-ard wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim allah does not need news from you because allah knows every little thing exists in this universe allah has the full knowledge what you have in your heart and your mind so don't have to declare your iman allah knows what you have what you are hiding what you are saying through your tongue and what is hidden in your heart my brothers and my sisters then allah subhanahu wa taala says yamununa alayka an aslamu qul la tamunu alayya islamakum prophet when they are declaring their islam they are showing that this is a favor for you that we by becoming muslim are giving favor to islam and wallahi majority of us have the same feeling today when i say i am muslim i feel like that you know i am giving a favor to islam no look at this aya that allah subhanahu wa taala saying to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if they come to you and they say that we become muslim and that's a favor for you prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell them no this is not a favor you are giving to me balillahu yamunu alaykum an hadakum lil iman in kuntum sadiqin fact of the matter is it's the favor of allah subhanahu wa taala that he has given you opportunity to accept islam to become muslim to say kalma la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah so it's not your favor to islam rather it's other way around that allah subhanahu wa taala has blessed you allah subhanahu wa taala has chosen you allah subhanahu wa taala has showered his mercy upon you that he has given you this tawfiq 
to say kalma la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah so you better should be proud of your kalma and your religion and your deen my brothers and my sisters today i am going to give you some tips that wallahi how we can make this religion relevant to our life believe me if you go through the world history the biggest three civilizations lived on this planet bigger than islam greek civilization hindu civilization chinese civilization they all vanished from the planet because the followers of those civilization they made these civilization irrelevant to their life yes through lip service they had some so come connection with these civilizations but they were not practicing they were not following they were not having those civilization as part of their life they were their heart and mind not with those civilization wallahi if you and me we treat islam the way these civilizations were treated the anjam the end what i see of those civilization civilizations that is the end i see down the road my brothers and my sisters so i'm going to give myself few tips that how really i can make this religion relevant to my life prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said very rightly in one of the hadith that this deen started at as gharib is strange nobody was believing what prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying in makka the beginning of this deen this religion was gharib is strange and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that this deen will become gharib again and this time in a you and me we live in we see our deen has become gharib if i talk about haya people like to look at me what you are talking about haya if i talk about brother don't do transaction based on riba what how i am going to do my business if you talk about brothers you know practice that you should come to masjid at least once a day you know islam is becoming the values of islam the practices of islam are becoming gharib again and as prophet sallam says practicing islam time will come that is like you are having a burning coal your on your hand but whoever will practice at that time glad tidings of the prophet muhammad sallam is that he called you and me as his brother and sahaba complained ya rasulullah we are not your brother he said no you are my sahaba you have seen me and that's why you are believing on me time will come there will be people they have not seen me but they will still believe me and one of them will be like a 50 of you so there is a glad tidings as well my brothers and my sisters if we stick to our religion the very first thing i will suggest you know in our home that we should have you know discussion about deen very practical discussion about we should see what topics of discussion we have in our homes healthy discussion about religion not criticizing that what's happening on other side of the world not criticizing any other muslim rather having some constructive some positive discussion about islam islam should be a topic of discussion in my home that i should be discussing with my kids that how we can practice this deen better how we can improve our salah how can we improve our relationship with quran how we can plan to go for friday prayer let's play, plan ahead of time how i can make it possible that at least at least i can go one time in a masjid how i can make sure that in my business transactions i don't do anything haram how i can practice these should be the topic of discussion with wife and children my brothers and my sisters the second thing i will say is the practice you know these days one of our problem is that we have lost the connection with everything we do in our religion let me give you example you know our salah 
Salah is not just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Take this out of your mind. Salah should be part of my everyday life. Salah is the meeting of me alone, meeting alone, Shahid Rafiq, meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one on one. This is manajat. I am discussing my problems with my Rabbul Alameen. For Sahaba, their practice was, if they had any problem in life, if they, have, if they had anything to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will wait for the time of Salah. So when they go in Salah, that is the time you present your problem in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is not a single hadith, not a single hadith in which Prophet Muhammad sallallahu after salah, he raised his hand to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Prophet was making all his duas in the salah while he is praying salah. That's why Ibn Qayyam rahmatullah alayhi said, then what about what a strange phenomena that when you are in front of a king face to face and you don't ask anything and when you leave his palace you come out of the door of a king and then you recall oh I should have asked him this I should have asked him that Ibn Qayyam said our condition is the same when we are in Salah we are so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sajda. Ask what your problem is. Present your issues to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we make salah the tool of communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brother, your sajda will not be of one minute. Wallahi, your sajda will be of ten minutes. Because you are talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the language of your heart. You are presenting your issues and problems in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If my salah will have that connection, same way Quran. Quran is not a book of sawab. Quran is talking to you me. Quran wants response from you and me. When I am reading Quran, Quran and me, we are having a discussion. So when I read Quran, actually there is a communication between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Same way when I go in my family my family is not just to raise doctors or to raise engineers or to make you know this or that or accountant no this family is as Hazrat Amr bin al-As once entered in his house and saw his wife was feeding a baby his baby he said don't feed this baby like you are feeding any child rather have an intention that you are feeding a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ghulam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day this slave, this abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be grown up and he will do ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will do service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever he will do in future will become sadqah jariya for you. So we should have that bigger picture of our family. You know, we see issues in family because we see family as a liability. I have seen many brothers going through this discussion. Why do I have to get married? Why should I have children? Brother, because your family and your children will be your legacy after you leave this dunya. Your family or your children will be sadqa jariya for you. You will live through your family and your children after you are gone from this dunya. So look from that perspective. It's not a liability. It's an honor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and me. Question is that if we see the right perspective, my brothers and my sisters, the third thing we should do is sohba. Wallahi, one of the shaykh said that, you know, ilm, the knowledge of deen, 10% of the knowledge is through formal education, formal tadris. You listen to lecture, you go to class, you go to madrasa, you go to school. 10% of the education is through tadris. 90% of the education is through tarbiya, through soba. Spending time with brothers and sisters, they can bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, that is the part that we miss the most. And the opportunity you can get 
grab those opportunities and i say to my brother and sister the best soba you can provide to your kids in this part of the world is stay connected with the masjid my brothers and my sisters i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala he gives you and me tawfiq that we can value our iman we can understand the value of this deen because success of my life through this deen in this dunya is my success in the hereafter you know in the last part of my khutba i want to share with you two mirrors i give them the name of two mirrors that if i am a businessman or i am running any type of business doctor engineer convenience shop that there are two questions that i should ask myself and the second mirror i want to share with you that how should i know that allah subhanahu wa taala is happy with me and i will give you four criteria for that and inshallah we will judge we will see ourselves in in these two mirrors the first thing i will say that if i am running any business two things that i should watch number one is that how my fellow employees and fellow brothers and sisters feel about me who are around me how comfortable they are do they really say good things on my back do they are they really happy or i am treating them the way i should be or i fall under that hadith in which prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the worst among you is that the people want to have friendship and relationship with him because they want to protect themselves from his harm they want to be your friend just because they don't want to say anything in front of you just because they don't want to put themselves in any kind of trouble and harm the second thing you should ask yourself is about your transactions that your transactions are according to quran or not brothers and sisters you know we in this part of the world we are the ambassadors of islam wallahi if i do anything it gives bad name to my religion not many people will talk about shahid rafiq but they will say yeah he is he's from pakistan he is muslim that's how he is doing the second mirror i want to share with you that how should we know that allah subhanahu wa taala is happy with me my brothers and my sisters the very first thing that you should ask yourself is that every day in what type of activities i am busy what i do 24/7 my chunk of my time where do i spend in what type of things i spend my day and night urdu mein kehte hain na masroofiyat meri masroofiyat kya hai pura din what is my routine you know all day long what i do all day long 24/7 that is first thing if i am busy in pleasing allah subhanahu wa taala if i am spending most of the my time to seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala or doing things which can make allah subhanahu wa taala happy helping somebody serving somebody doing my business according to the teachings of quran earning risk e halal through the means that allah subhanahu wa taala has made halal for me that means that i am spending time to seek the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala the second thing i have to ask whether i am happy with allah subhanahu wa taala or not hazrat zainul abidin one time entered in kaaba and he saw somebody was asking dua ya allah be happy with me zainul abidin asked him are you happy with allah subhanahu wa taala the way allah subhanahu wa taala whatever he has given you the way he has provided you the way he has kept you if you are happy with allah radiyallahu anhum wa radu an remember that aya that if you are happy with allah subhanahu wa taala allah will be happy with you if you are a complainer and complaining then allah will not be happy with you so i should ask if i am happy that means allah is happy with me the third criteria is that in community if people love you for allah subhanahu wa taala they love you they like you only 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not because of your status not because of your position not because of your money but your community brothers and sisters they love you because to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the third sign the fourth sign to understand if Allah is happy that whenever your parents they see you immediately when they see you they raise your hand to pray for you they give dua they say good things about to you about you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever's parents are gone from this dunya we lost that opportunity but whoever's parents are still alive value them my brothers and my sisters that is something you are going to miss once they are gone from this dunya um.